Hey everybody, I'm Joshua from Johnny Appleseed Organic and today I want to do another little uh, Syntropic update, show you guys what's going on in the planting. It's been three to four weeks since the last video and I wanted to show you what's going on. Here we are and we're, we're hanging out in some corn. This is the, the Oaxacan green corn and in the last video I realized I was pr mispronouncing it. I was pronouncing it Oaxacan and apparently it's Oaxacan so thank you for correcting me on correcting me on that and the jack beans are really coming up and I'm super excited about these jack beans and I'm hoping that we get them to go to seed this season so we can save our seed and plant it out again next next go about and then right here you can see we have a service plant that has made itself known that is a it's a partridge pea and partridge pea is something I'm really excited about for this area and we're not gonna treat it like it's a weed, we're gonna treat it like it's a valued member of this consortium. Right next to these corns here, right in between these corns and this jack bean, we have a long-term service plant for this system. And this right here, this is gamma grass. It's also called Fakahatchee grass in Florida. Um, or I have friends that call it Fakahatchee grass in Florida, I should say. So as the corn gets phased out and the jack beans are done in winter, or close to fall winter, this guy, will come through and be a long-term source of food and mulch for the tree rows. So throughout these, these top tree rows within the Centropic system, we have this gamma grass interplanted. And this stuff is a real uh, powerhouse for biomass creation. And I'm, I'm quite fond of it. And in Brazil, a, a lot of the, the Centropic guys, they're using uh, Mombasa grass. And I thought, Mombasa grass won't grow here as much as I wanted it to. It takes damage at 28 and we often get below that. And I have some friends that in Louisiana, they got around 12 degrees and their gamma grass took no damage at all. So this has immense potential for our centropic system here. We didn't actually have enough jack bean to plant the whole system. So I had to get a little bit creative and use another kind of bean that, that holds a similar strata. And so we wound up using some bush beans here and we have corn, two bush bean plants, and then another corn. In the future, what I think I wanna do is if I can get enough jack bean, I would like to do corn, bush bean, jack bean, bush bean, corn. So we can really stack this space out. Something I've learned during this planting is I can really plant even more densely than what I planted this system. Uh, to outcompete weeds because we have had to do quite a bit of hand weeding within this system and I would like to see if we can reduce that. So you can see the eucalyptus here. It's starting to get a good amount of size on it. It's probably almost four feet tall now. And then right now the bananas are just starting to pop up. They're just breaking the surface. So you can see the spacing on that eucalyptus and banana right there. It's quite tight. It's about a foot or a foot and a half away from each other. And this is, this is a marriage. This is the king and that's the queen of biomass creation within the Syntropic concept. Before we continue, I want to tell you about Climate Garden, our no-kill organic fertilizer for the eco-conscious home gardener. If you care about the planet and want to support what we're doing at the Johnny Appleseed Organic Village, visit johnnyappleseed.com or tap the link in the video description to learn more. Thank you, your support really does help. Now back to the video. You can see the pecans here have flushed out and they're flushing out nicely. We'll see how much growth we get on them on this season. Uh, eventually this corn will come down and it will be used as mulch for the pecans and the other fruit trees within the system. We, our okra here is starting to really come through. And the goal with this planting was to hold a space with the beans to reduce any sort of uh, weed pressure and create biomass in the form of their in the form of their mulch that will then mulch down and allow for the sh the okra to come up through the beans. Here the bitter melons are doing pretty decently. If I were to go back and redo this planting, I want to plant the the sun hemp here uh, a few weeks before we plant the bitter melon. We, we put the bitter melon in the ground here as starts. We didn't direct sow them. And we planted the sun hemp, I think the same day. And what I, what I would like to do next time is actually plant the sun hemp first and then plant the, the bitter melon to give the sun hemp a chance to go a little bit taller 
so the, the bitter melon can climb on the sun hemp a little bit more effectively. Here we have a yautia right next to a banana. And this yautia is one, is one of the star students of the actual planting right now. It's really, really booming and starting to get some decent sized leaves on it. These leaves can actually get three to four feet across. So this is gonna be not only an incredible root crop, but an incredible biomass creator that'll help drive the succession of this system forward. Here we have some eggplant that we put in and this was a little bit of an experiment to see what would happen. And then in between the eggplants, we have pigeon pea. I was really interested to try this experiment because I've heard of people using eggplant in this way. But what I would do next time is I would plant either jack bean or bush bean in between the eggplant and the, and the pigeon pea. You can see there's weed pressure in here that we need to come in and we need to hand weed again. And I would like to actually stack the system that much more densely so we can reduce the amount of hand labor associated with this planting. A lot of the blueberries are responding really, really well. And considering these were transplanted this past winter into here, they I would consider them in pretty good health. They, some of them have, they flushed out a lot of new growth and then they died right after. And some of them have some, some pest issues on their new growth up here, but all in all, a lot of the blueberries are doing quite well considering what they went through. We had a, a few extra tomatoes and I saw a video from my friends over at the Agroforestry Academy, Gennaro and Felipe, where they were doing a multiple hectare centropic system and they're using tomatoes as a service plant, as, uh, both a production and a service plant. And they're planting it along with corn and they were using jack bean. And I actually might have some extra tomato plants I don't wanna stick in with the jack bean. And they were getting really, really good results with that. So I figured I'd run a, a similar trial with the corn and the bush beans and see what happens with these tomatoes. In the last video we made on the Centropic system, I had talked about a, a crop that I'm really interested in in this Bun Long Taro. And I've noticed that growing these from tissue culture, which these are originally from tissue culture, is pretty slow. But every, every bit of growth I see on them, I get happy. So I figured I'd show you guys what's going on here. And they're, they're looking pretty good. When you look down the row, you can see a bunch of them really starting to grow. And taro is something I think has immense potential for this area. There's not a culture around taro, but we get enough rain and the soils here hold enough water. So if we can develop systems that hold water in an appropriate way, taro has a, there can be an entire, entire taro industry based in this area, which I think is absolutely incredible. Here we have actually had some, uh, some rabbits pruning our sun hemp for us, which I'm okay with. They've been, they've been preventing it from going to flower because I did plant our sun hemp a wee bit early. So it has gone into flower a little bit early, earlier than I would want it to. But yeah, so sun, the, the bun long taro, it's coming along well. I think it's actually coming along better here than it was in Florida where I planted it originally. So I'm, I'm super excited about that. So here's a, one of the Satsumas. Not looking too bad. It's put on quite a bit of new growth since we put them in the ground. These trees were really floppy when we first got them. Normally I wouldn't actually leave a stake like this in here, but this tree is almost incapable of holding its own weight up. And I already have got one decent prune on it. And actually on some of these citrus, we, we have had some, some, some die off on the graft or some of the grafts actually just completely died. But what's interesting is the rootstocks are still alive and well. So we're gonna allow those rootstocks to actually even grow here. And it'll be a little bit of genetic diversity within the system. And what, what'll be interesting is it'll be like almost having a seed grown tree within the system. And it'll go through a similar accumulation phase that a grafted tree wouldn't necessarily go through because a grafted tree thinks it's an adult tree and a seedling thinks it is a juvenile or it is a juvenile, I should say. So a grafted tree won't necessarily go through the same accumulation, biomass accumulation phase that a seedling tree would, which is uh, an interesting concept. We actually made a video on this planting specifically in Edo corn, bean and watermelon consortium and something I've noticed since this corn and the Edo and all that started coming up 
is we didn't necessarily have the best catch rate on the Edo. And I knew when I got the, the roots that there would be a certain percentage, a certain mortality rate, I guess I can say, a certain amount of roots out rot in the ground and it was much higher than I really wanted it to be. Ideally, when you're planting Edos and things, you, you want to have a different source of germplasm where you can actually grow from the tops, like right there, or corn that hasn't actually been refrigerated. In this case, I didn't have much of a choice if I wanted to grow Edo, if I wanted to run this experiment, I had to work with what I got. So what we'll probably wind up doing next season is the Edo that we get from this planting, we'll just expand the, the, the planting from that same corn that we grew this season. And we'll go from there. We'll keep running trials and experiments until we, we get where we want to go. Some of the Edos that we got are actually doing pretty well. And it's not necessarily that the ones that we got or the ones that are actually growing are doing bad. It's just that we had a really a, a decently high mortality rate on the Edos themselves. Thank you for joining me in this walkabout in the Syntropic planting today. If you like what you saw, like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell to get all the notifications whenever we drop a new video. Follow us on all the social medias. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.